Can everybody hear me okay? Oh, it is on. Awesome. Great. Okay. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, my talk is called Eating in Tech. Um, the things in this talk don't apply just to me and my problems, or really just to the tech industry, but we'll get there. Um, as mentioned, my name is Stephanie Slattery, and I can't really emphasize enough that the content warnings for this talk are very serious. They are my personal experiences with disordered eating. Please keep that in mind if that applies to you as a content warning. So what am I talking about? First, we're going to discuss what my problem is. Why are you listening to me? Why is this person up here talking to you? We're going to talk about issues around food and eating and tech, and then I'm going to tell you ways that you can help us. So my problem, best way to explain this that I have is by talking about food. Can everybody go, ooh? Ooh, food, ooh, yay, right? <laughs> there are a lot of delicious things up here. We have like a, a salad and some carrots and lobster and avocado toast and all sorts of exciting things, right? Um, food's great, right? It's delicious. You also need it in order to be alive, so that's a definite plus on its side. Um, but there's a lot more to food than that. It's a way to show that you care for somebody. You make them a meal, you buy them lunch, you show them affection with food. It's also a social experience. You have dinner with your family, or you go out for drinks and snacks with your friends. You have popcorn while you watch a movie with your significant other. Um, it's also deeply ingrained in culture. Uh, the food that belongs to a culture can sometimes really be a touchstone of it, a way to communicate what culture you belong to. Um, and it's a way to express yourself. The way that you prepare food, the way that you eat it, the way that you engage with it is sort of a part of who you are. It's important. So I want you to, in order to help me explain this, I want you to look at all these lovely flus I have for you as an example, and think about what you've eaten so far, I don't know, like this week. Breakfast yesterday, lunch earlier this week, dinner, like think about what you've eaten. Maybe think about what you've eaten in the last month. It's probably a lot of stuff, it's a lot of meals. How about the last year? What a weird question, how am I supposed, that's hundreds of things, Stephanie, I can't just think about that. Well. All of those things you've eaten in the last year probably couldn't fit on one slide. I'm assuming, I feel like that's a fair assumption, right? Um, for me, that's not the case. It's about five, six things, maybe about a dozen or so different unique foods that I have eaten in the last year, that I have eaten the entire time I have been alive, pretty much. Um, this uh, is because I have disordered eating. It's a part of who I am. Um, out of all of the different foods that exist on this wonderful planet that I'm sure are very delicious, there are about a dozen or so that I can eat. And when I say can eat, I mean can comfortably eat. Um, and when I say comfortably eat, I mean eat without having a panic attack and throwing up and having internal bleeding at times. That's a new development, but anyways. Um, foods I can eat without losing it, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> So unsurprisingly, this has a pretty severe impact on my day-to-day -day life. Who knew? You need to eat food every day. This is a problem I engage with a lot. Um, disordered eating, what is that? This is kind of a confusing term. It sounds like eating disorder. Is it the same thing? It's, it's not really. Um, it's a set of abnormal eating behaviors, like mine, <laughs> um, that aren't part of an other, another eating disorder, like anorexia or bulimia or something like that. Um, it manifests in different ways in different people, but for me, um, it leads to an extreme limitation on the foods I can eat. Extreme. We're talking the order of dozens here. Um, it also means I have a huge difficulty eating around other people. If you were near me at lunch today, you saw me low-key freaking out. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, due to anxiety around all this, and it's kind of obvious that I eat in a weird way, that can make things incredibly uncomfortable. When I see other people eat, when you talk about how I'm eating, things like that, um, talking about food and eating, um, yeah, it's, it's a struggle for me daily. Um, but on top of that, I also write code. That's not a bad thing, that's nice, I like writing code. That's not stressful, well it's stressful, but it's not like disordered eating. <laughs> I write code and that's not a problem. Um, the part that makes this a problem is that I do it with other people. I work in an office for eight hours a day, five days a week, probably like some other folks in this room here. Um, and when you're around other people for that long, they're probably going to want to eat food, <laughs> and you're probably going to need to eat food. Um, so it can be a problem. 
so how does this intersect with food in tech and eating in tech? Um, as I mentioned, a lot of the things I'm going to discuss could probably apply to other industries besides mine, but um, there are a lot of sort of more unique ways that we engage with food in the tech industry that can be problems, um, and not just for me, right? Uh, there are plenty of other people on the planet with disordered eating, with eating disorders, um, with different sorts of physical and medical issues that cause them to have a restricted diet. Um, like diabetes, they might have uh, celiacs, they might have an allergy, they might have a feeding tube. On top of that, there are plenty of people uh, that have mental health reasons like I do for a restricted diet. Um, and plenty of people, I'm sure plenty of people in this room with cultural reasons for eating food in a certain way. Um, perhaps due to a religious restriction, or maybe it's a holiday and you're fasting. Um, or you've chosen to be vegan or vegetarian. So we all have all sorts of different dietary restrictions. And if you're a person who has something like that, you're probably nodding your head like, yeah, I'm experiencing the same problems as you, Stephanie. So let's sort of talk through a journey in the tech industry and how it hits along these issues in food. Um, the first of which is finding a job in the tech industry, which I know we've had a few talks about today. Um, but sort of the core problem that I encounter in uh, my work um, is when I'm looking at job postings, and I'm looking, oh, here's what the job is, here's what the company is, and seeing what benefits they offer. Oh, here's the insurance, how many vacation days, that's cool. And then I get to the point uh, that is becoming more and more common where companies will brag about free food, we have so much food, we have free sodas, we cater in lunch every day. There's no need to leave the office, just eat the food we give you. Um, which, I mean, as an aside, there are a lot of problems with the idea of sort of trapping your employees in an office by, <laughs> you know, saying, well, why would you want to leave? We got free food for you, which is a problem for everybody and a huge problem for me um, because most of the time I, I can't eat but free food. Um, and again, eating it in an office is, means I'm eating it with other people, which, again, a huge problem. Um, so to be quite honest, unless a company is amazing in every other way, I don't apply to jobs that offer free food or rather ones that brag about it. If it's a throwaway line at the very end, maybe I will feel safe there. But the idea of bragging about how you're going to give me food to eat and I'm going to eat with you, and isn't it going to be great, is not great for me. <laughs> okay, so I found a job, I've applied, I'm interviewing, hooray, I got an interview. Um, we may have experienced, uh, other people in this room, the idea of co coffee. We're going to go get coffee and we're going to chat. Um, can't have coffee. <laughs> um, there's also the idea of interviewing over lunch, um, which can be fine if you warn me. We're going to go get lunch together at this place. Does that work for you? That's fine. That's fine. Um, sort of as an anecdote, I have had, however, a final round interview where I've done unpaid code challenges. I've met with all sorts of people. I go to their office. They love me. They think I'm great. Yes. And they say, let's talk offers. And I'm like, oh, an offer. Hooray. And they say, let's do it over food. It's getting late. Let's go get lunch around the corner. We're going to our favorite restaurant. So of course, I begin to quietly have a panic attack in front of very important people who I want to have me give a job, give a job to me. But we go get lunch. I have no choice in where we're going. Um, I look at the menu. There's nothing I can eat. Um, and I don't know if you've ever had an experience in your life where you have had to explain to somebody why you're not going to eat their food. And there's some reasons that are kind of acceptable, like, oh, I already had lunch, or, oh, I'm allergic to this, and things like that. Um, I've gotten really good at lying about why I'm not eating food, as an aside, or probably not that good. I think I'm good. Um, but so, right, so I order what is apparently their favorite item on this menu, um, and have to order it with almost no toppings on it to make it feel like a safe food for me to eat, um, which they begin to kind of jibe at me for. Like, oh, why would you get it without all the good stuff on it? Why would you want such a boring thing to eat? Um, to which, I don't know about you, but I don't exactly feel comfortable disclosing a medical condition during a conversation in which I'm getting a job offer. That, you know, I, I don't know if that's just me. <laughs> but um, so yeah, I half-heartedly say something about, oh, well, I thought it might be good to try it this way. Um, I didn't end up accepting their offer. I've also had interview questions about food, which I didn't think whatever happened to me. It was very weird. Um, I had a question in the middle of like standard HR style questions of what's the hardest experience you've ever had on a team? And I get asked, if we had a potluck, what would you bring to eat? Which is 
I don't know why you're asking me that to begin with. That's kind of weird. Um, I ended up accepting that job, so I found out later why they asked that. He wanted to see what people would do when he asked a weird question. Throw them off. Uh, okay, okay, whatever. Um, but so, as a person who, for my entire life, have, remember that slide where I barely eat anything, right? I barely know anything about food. Um, I would watch cooking channels on PBS as a kid so I could pretend to know what food was like to be able to not seem so weird. <laughs> um, so I get a question of what do you bring to a potluck? Um, I said napkins, which he apparently liked. Nobody ever thinks of napkins, so if you ask that question, you can use my answer. Um, but right, so that was really weird. I don't know anything about food. I can't answer a weird potluck question, but fine, okay. So I've had an interview. I got the job. Hooray, a job. It's my first day at a shiny office. Wow. Um, and if you have ever had that experience, you might be aware of this commonality of, oh, we're going to show this new person that we like them and that we care about them, and we're going to buy them food. Yeah, I see a few nodding heads. Um, so uh, another problem I've experienced around this was at a company where I was in the middle of doing my HR paperwork and saying, you know, picking up my insurance and all that. And I'm told just afterwards by the lovely HR person that, oh, next what we're doing is we're taking you out to lunch with the directors and the CEO and me to this restaurant. Let's go right now. Um, so again, this is an experience where I quietly have a panic attack while walking to a restaurant. It's kind of a theme of my life. <laughs> But right, uh, we go there, and again, these are very important people who I want to impress, who I care about what they think about me, who I do not want to disclose a medical condition to. Same story, more or less as before, I order something weird, they all ask, why are you eating something so weird? And happily afterwards, we're walking back to the office, uh, the HR person asks me, oh, are you a vegetarian? I'm technically a vegetarian in that I don't eat meat. I also don't eat vegetables or most other food, but yes, I'm a vegetarian, is what I tell her. Um, and they excitedly proclaim me to be the second vegetarian they've ever hired, and they're so, they're so excited that now that the office manager has somebody else who can eat vegetarian food with her. Ugh, ugh, it makes me mad just thinking about it. Okay, so that happens. I've also had it a job where I'm new, and on my onboarding checklist, like, oh, you have to set up your desk and download these programs and all those sorts of things. I'm also told that as a way to onboard into the culture, I need to get lunch with all of my coworkers on my team individually or else. Um, I don't think they would have fired me if I didn't get lunch with people, but when you're told it's part of cultural onboarding, you don't really have a choice. <laughs> um, yeah. That's the sort of thing that makes you want to quit a job right when you start it. But, okay. So I have a job, I've been there for a bit, and now there's this weird problem that I've not had outside of the tech industry of team lunches out. Because we're fun, and we're exciting, and we want to be friends and a family, and we're going to go get food together. So I had a job, it's actually the same job where I got the potluck question to give you a sense of, of what's going on here. Um, my boss offhandedly mentioned to me that the team loves eating sushi. We're big sushi fans. And I said, oh, I don't, I don't really like sushi, um, which is a lie. Um, I've eaten sushi once, and I had a panic attack and threw up. Um, so I guess you could say I don't like sushi. Uh, <laughs> so I tell him, oh, I don't like sushi. And he goes, ha. And then he tells the rest of the team that oh, Stephanie doesn't like sushi, and they all laugh and start to make fun of me just over time for not liking sushi, which I don't know why that's funny, but uh, they thought it was. Um, so then I clarify after getting a little freaked out by that, saying, well, it's not that I don't like sushi. Um, it's that when I last had sushi, I had a bad experience implying that the fish was bad, and it was a bad experience, so I guess that's not a lie, but... And he said, oh, ha, and laughed, and told everybody, no, it's not that she doesn't like it. It made her throw up, and they laughed, and continued to make fun of me for disliking sushi, which I still don't understand why that's funny. So, of course, the first team lunch at this company, guess where we go? Sushi! <laughs> Yay! It's a very nice sushi restaurant with like 14 people on our team ordering all sorts of what I'm sure is probably very exciting and delicious and lovely food. 
and I sit there with a soda, soda and a bowl of miso soup, looking terrified and eating nothing. Um, and at some point, somebody notices I'm not eating sushi, and they go, what? You don't like sushi? And I went, yes. I don't like sushi. I can't have sushi. I threw up the last time I had sushi. And they kept making fun of me for this until I left that job. Um, they made fun of vegans. It's really weird. Um, yeah, and when I'm saying this story to you in this room, I feel like this is a silly problem. Like, she doesn't like sushi. Get on with it. I don't care. Deal with your life. And I can't emphasize enough that this is a mental health condition that causes panic and a severe disruption to my life. Um, but right. Ultimately, as an aside at that job, this led to me needing to be the person to organize every team lunch and every order of snacks and anything involving food, which was not in my job description. There was somebody whose job that was. Um, but everybody decided that, well, it's too hard to figure out what to eat with Stephanie, so we're just going to make Stephanie plan all of that and organize it and invite everybody. And it was awful. Um, but hey. So the next thing is the idea of lunch and learns. I don't know if anybody else is familiar with the idea of a lunch and learn. I'm seeing nodding, nodding heads. OK, cool. To sort of catch everybody up, it's where you order lunch and somebody teaches you about something. And that's fine. Having food at a meeting, cool. No problem. No complaints there from me. However, this brings up this idea that I've experienced in tech, which is the idea of food as currency. The idea that you don't need to pay me in money, you can pay me in food and it'll be fine. Um, I have had a job that was uh, one where we had to worry about billing clients and tracking time cards and things like that, right? Um, we had lunch and learns about once a month and we were told that because we were being paid in food, this lunch and learn, which was a required part of our job, was on our own time. Yeah, I heard that's unfortunate, and I, I agree. Um, right, so of course we had no choice in what food we could have. I was not the only person with problems, but it was rough. Um, because I don't understand how for an hour-long meeting that's a part of my job, buying $5 a Panda Express is an equivalent value to my time, but fine. I've also had at meetings like this, people who are in charge of dealing with these collective orders um, intentionally change the food I ordered. Um, specifically, Jimmy John's, this is always a problem with Jimmy John's, I don't know why, but uh, the woman who was in charge of dealing with our food order um, asked everybody what kind of sandwich they want, and I said what it was. If you're a Jimmy John's connoisseur like I am, uh, you will know that a Slim Six sub is a sub, a piece of bread with cheese on it and nothing else. Stephanie, that's so weird. Why do you eat like that? I have a disorder. Um, but hey. So this is what I ordered. Um, and she looked at my order, thought to herself, apparently, that can't be what she wanted. That's so boring. So she changed my order to like a regular six, which is a, a sandwich with all sorts of, what I'm sure is probably very exciting, delicious things, but not for me. Um, so I didn't have lunch. And she said, oh, well, I thought you'd like this more. <sighs> Fine. So then there's the final problem, which is the idea of eating at your desk. Um, which is this weirdly rewarded thing in my experience in tech of, well, if you're eating your lunch at your desk, you must be being very productive and very good, and that's valuable and good at you, good, good employee. Um, but it's also pitied, right? Like if you see somebody eating alone at their desk, food by themselves, which probably looks like boring food, you might think, oh, how sad. I should help them. I, here, come eat lunch with me. Um, which is probably fine for some people, but not for me, who is quietly sitting at my desk having a panic attack at the idea of eating with you in a lunchroom. It's both valued and punished. Um, to, I hope this sort of summarizes a lot of these different points where food can be a problem for people like me or people with similar problems. Um, and I think probably more valuable is explain how you can help. Again, this is helping more people than just me. This is also everybody with an eating disorder or a medical restriction on the food they can eat or a cultural reason for restricting their diet. Um, the first thing is to keep your thoughts about food to yourself. <laughs> if you think that what I'm eating looks weird, or that's so boring, why would you eat that? Or, oh, gross, what kind of food is that? What weird thing is that? I don't really, that's unnecessary. It's really unnecessary. You don't know why that person might be eating in that way. You don't know why they like that boring thing. Keep it to yourself. In addition, don't take away my ability to choose what I'm eating um, or to choose if I should eat. And um, there are a lot of wonderful people, some of them in this room I see, who I talked to about constructing this talk. 
Um, and we talked about ideas around, there are plenty of medical reasons why somebody might not be able to eat right now. They can't eat lunch at one o'clock today. They need to wait until later. Don't put me in a situation where I have to eat food. Um, for example, a client meeting where we're getting lunch with the client. Don't make it so that way I look rude if I can't eat right now without an explanation I want to disclose to you. In that same vein, don't make a situation all about food. So, like I said before with lunch and learns, food is fine. Have food at the event. We're at Alter Comp. They had a lovely lunch. No problem. Don't make the purpose of the event food. Don't say for our team bonding exercise, we're going to go get sushi and sit at a restaurant. Make it, uh, we're going to go play board games and have a beer and whatever the food is. Or we're going to go bowling and eat food there. Make it another activity that involves food, not one where you feel socially ostracized for not eating the food everybody else is eating. Um, if you're going to have an event with food, share the menu with people ahead of time. This makes it easier for people like me and a lot of other folks with restricted diets to decide if they're going to eat what you're providing or if they might need some sort of accommodation that you're not making. This also allows me to decide, well, maybe I'll just eat ahead of time or I'll eat after or I'll bring my own food. Don't make me have to sort of gamble on if you're probably gonna have something I can eat. Also, really important to me, don't pay people with food. If you're gonna have a lunch and learn, don't decide that $5 of food is worth a developer's time when you're charging a client $150 an hour. Don't ask people to stay late after work to work on a side project for the company on their own time, but pay them in a slice of pizza. That is not money. You cannot, you cannot pay your rent with food. Food is nice, food is cool, give people food, fine. Don't decide that food is worth more than money. If you're going to provide an extra benefit of giving everybody free lunch every day, consider instead paying them more money. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Instead of paying, I don't know, five bucks a day to have food catered in per person, just give us all more money and then we can buy our own food. I don't know why that's a weird idea, but apparently that's really weird. Um, on top of that, just in general with all this, let people manage their own body. Um, probably a, a good choice in a lot of other arenas in life, but also this. Let me decide what food I am eating. Let me decide if I want to eat. Don't decide that you're gonna manage it for me and make sure I eat. Unless you're my therapist, which he's apparently going to watch this recording. Hi, Ryan. Um, but <laughs> That was a fun session. Um, but yeah, don't, don't manage somebody else's body for them unless they've asked you to please help them with that. Um, and if for some reason you do want to be helpful, which is good, you should want to be helpful, here's how you do it. You say, Stephanie, I noticed you have some dietary restrictions. Is there anything you can tell me about it so I can help make sure you have food at the conference or when we order lunch or something like that? Ask me, just ask, it's okay. But let me say no. Let me say that I don't feel comfortable disclosing a medical condition to you. And if I say that to you, that means that I am accepting of the fact that I'm not going to be accommodated at an event. And that I'm okay with it. I am so used to having no food to eat, you would have no idea. Like, I'm, I'm good at dealing with this, I'm fine. Um, and if there's nothing I can eat, and you see me at that event, it's fine. I'm gonna grab my own food, I can solve my own problem. Don't concern troll me about it though. Don't say, Stephanie, I'm so sorry you had nothing to eat. Is there anything we can do better next time? Here, let me, let me go buy you food right now. Let me deal with my own problem, unless I have asked you to help me. And I really can't emphasize enough, by doing these things, you're helping more people than just me with disordered eating, with a weird panic disorder around food. I'm talking about it. I'm proud of the fact that I have not panicked once while I have been telling all of you people about this. But, uh, you're helping a lot of other people with a lot of medical conditions, with cultural reasons for restricting their diet, with all sorts of reasons. And by doing these things and being just a little more aware of how you're talking about and dealing with food and eating in the tech industry, you're making space for more people in tech. Thanks. <laughs>